action. I swear this is the first take. <laughs> All right, I'm Ben Morris. This is Lisa Picard, the captain herself. And this video is brought to you by the Silton Foundation, helping support dance education. I like the way that rhymed. So anyways, if you are in need of funds to help you further your dance education, you should t check out the SiltonFoundation.org. They give away $10,000 a year in scholarship money, as well as passes for events, once those events start back up, of course. They're also a nonprofit organization if you are interested in donating. So check out the SiltonFoundation.org. And thank you to them for bringing you this video and supporting us while we video it for you. All right, so um, for this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about extensions when we're adding extra time at the end or in between patterns, and also what we can do with those, why we might do those, and a little bit of styling, mixing them in. Um, so first things first, before I do an extension, before I give my follower extra time, or rather before I have the ability to tell my follower not to come forward and to stay longer, I have to make sure that I'm being really clear about giving my follower the signal to come forward in the first place, which is this part right there, before I draw her forward, right? So what I want you guys to just start with playing with really quickly, just on your own, is just working on this moment where we give that follower that little here we go signal in our body before we draw them forward. And this video is not like a technique video about like, I want you to roll your foot and straighten your hip and straighten your hip, straighten your leg and do this with your hip and what, like I don't care exactly how you do it. I just want you to make sure that you are being clear doing it. So this will be an excellent time to pause the video. Actually 30 seconds from now will be an excellent time to pause the video. And you're gonna try this. I want you to just start at a standstill. And if you need to in your head, you can go five, six, here we go. But don't do it out loud. Instead, show your partner the here we go part with your body, right? I'm taking my body back. I might be exaggerating it down here. Maybe it's more through my hip. But the idea is I'm giving that stretch away. I'm stretching my follower away onto their left foot so that she is prepared when I bring her forward and not surprised. If that's working pretty well, then have them try closing their eyes and see if you can still make it work. Yes, that was risky. We didn't <laughs> test that. See if you can still make it work without counting in out loud, but don't do this. This one doesn't count. Or like if you use the eyebrows, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but you don't want to be like eyebrows and chin, that, that doesn't count. It needs to come from the body and the connection. And practice that a whole bunch of times until that's really, really reliable. And that should be happening at the end of your anchor. So you can just do this on some sugar bushes and underarms and just make sure that you're giving that here we go and really clear that we're about to go forward. Cool, here it is again. Cool, okay, so once that signal is really clear, then we cannot give that signal sometimes if we want to stay longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sugar push and our underarm, simple sequence that we'll stick to for right now, and we are just going to add two extra beats onto that. So we're just going to go one, two, three, and four, five, and six, stay seven, eight, go one, two, three and four, five and six, bonus beats, and then prepare to go, okay? But what I want you to notice is that signal, I'm not giving that signal on six now, I'm waiting till eight to give that signal, because if I go like this, one, two, three and four, five and six, no, she was already ready to go forward, right? So instead, you'll notice that I don't do that extra little bit on six. I wait until eight, and now it's really clear for her. I wait until eight, and now it's really clear for my partner when we're doing that, okay? Once that sequence feels like it's working for you, then we're gonna mix it up a little bit to make sure that you are actually leading it, and they're actually following it, and you're not just following this preset eight count sequence, because that's not super useful on the social dance floor. Um, by the way, if you see me constantly glancing out of my peripheral vision here, I don't know how obvious it is. I have a clock over there because this video is supposed to be like 15 minutes-ish in length and I'm a bit of a rambler as demonstrated right now. So I'm just like keeping track and really hoping that that clock is actually working now that I think about it because there's no seconds on the, the video. So we'll see what you get. All right. It's, it's moved? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Good to know. 
All right, so here's what I want you guys to play with. Now, just start here, and we're just gonna do walk, walks in place. Like, just go like this, and then eventually leaders on one of those steps with your right foot. Boom, give that feeling. Cool. And then go out, and do it again. I don't know how many you're gonna do. Two counts, four counts, 22 counts, that would be excessive, right? And then, what I want you to do now is pause this video, throw in a song, do the sequence we just gave you. Sugar push, underarm, sugar push, underarm. If you wanna mix in other patterns, you can. And sometimes, don't do an extension. Sometimes do two counts, sometimes do four counts. Six counts is probably excessive, but if you wanna play with it now, you can. So, making sure that we're being really clear about giving that signal so our follower is never surprised by the fact that we haven't brought them forward or when we do. And if they're not surprised by it, then they feel more confident using that to do stuff. If that's working really well, a little bonus you can try, by the way, is try doing this for like different handholds or positions. So maybe I'm here and I'll go back to the beginning of this class and I try practicing that from that or practicing that from this position. And then, for example, I might do this and then I can give her the same thing here. Oh, there's that signal. And she's not surprised when I bring her forward. So try that to music. Pausing, unpausing. I hope that went really well and worked really well. We're gonna spice it up a little bit now because here's the thing, I never really want you to do extensions that are just like lifeless walk walks in place. You're never just gonna be like, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, march. Go. That's not very exciting. You should be doing extensions for kind of one of three reasons. Either you want to do something with them, you feel like your follower wants to do something with them, or sometimes we come out of a move and we're just like, we need a breather. Like that happens a lot when we turn right till the end of the anchor. So like a whip with a double outside turn, for example. I'll come out of that. And it can feel really frantic to be like, go now! So a lot of times, I'm like, let's breathe for a second. Then we go. Okay, so now, assuming we're doing it with some styling, so let's put to use these walk walks and do something with them. So, a few different options. I don't care exactly what you're doing with it. Sometimes I kind of twist into the knees, right? I might do something with the other foot. I can take them low. I like going out to the side. Sometimes I'll be like, look at my hips, my shoulders, <laughs> right? Um, one that I'm a really big fan of is kind of these swivels here, right? So I'm twisting the direction that I'm stepping, and I like to get kind of low with that, and sometimes we'll do a little tap in the middle, and if you want to be roisting about it, put your hand on your forehead like this. They'll be like, we're really enthusiastic on this phrase change, for example, and they don't have to necessarily be exactly the same as your partner. The fact that you're holding on to each other will influence each other, so that you're probably doing something complimentary. Like, it would be weird if she's twisting that way and I'm twisting this way. That's super strange. Um, but we don't necessarily have to match. We'll just probably be influenced by what the other person is doing. So now, when we do these walk walks, hopefully on your end with some music so you're inspired, you might be like into it a little bit as you're doing it, as opposed to just, I'm keeping time, like this, okay? Um, also, another option, to spice that up a little bit if you would like to, is instead of just doing the walk-walk rhythm, you can use a kickball change rhythm instead. And this one, you either one of you can do this, you both can do it, or neither of you can. It's not something that has to, again, match perfectly. One of you could be doing the kickball change rhythm, and one of you might be doing the walk-walk rhythm instead. So, the reason I like to use the kickball change rhythm here is it's three rhythms instead of two, ba, 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 instead of just ba, ba. So it's a little more interesting, but it is still only two weight shifts. And the advantage to it only being two weight shifts is that it keeps you on the correct foot. So that when you do decide to go, you're not having to deal with being on the wrong foot or figure out how to fake it or fix it. You're already there. So, um, kickball change rhythm, if you haven't done a kickball change rhythm, after a walk, walk, and a triple, it's probably the next most common one that you want to get comfortable with in West Coast Swing. So leaders, left foot, followers, right foot, we just have that kick, step, step, kick, step, step. Except generally, stylistically in West Coast Swing, we don't tend to actually kick the foot in the air anymore. Most of the time, people point it on the ground. Depends on exactly what you hear in the music. My rough guideline for this, stylistically and sort of generationally with movement and music is if the song has at 
actual, real, live instruments in it, like actual horns, actual drums, you can probably get away with an actual kickball change. If it's more modern, synthesized, acoustic, whatever music, then keep the foot low instead. So we can start with just this, and then try putting the foot in different places. So I might have it forward, side, back, up. You don't have to do exactly the same one as I. You're like trying to fall this way. It's like some quick reaction game, right? So just move it or move it around the clock, whatever. Just get comfortable with that. And then sometimes I'll do a sweep forward or back. Try moving the ball change. I'll take it over here. I'll take it over there. I'll take it over there. And so we can do that one when we're out there. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, you don't have to do the same one as, like, go for it. Yeah, you, you be you, I'll be me, it works out pretty well, boom. Maybe she does that, and I'm doing the walk, walk, well, she did, okay, well, now she's doing the walk, walk, but you did, she just can't help it. You get the idea. So we do this forever, and then eventually I'm like, here we go, and she's not surprised when I then draw her forward. So, back to the music on your end. You're going to press pause on this, and you're going to try that same sequence. Sugar push, underarm, varying length extensions, but now those extensions are going to be a little bit spicier. Maybe you're doing a more interesting walk-walk. Maybe you are mixing in that kickball change rhythm, but not with an actual kick. Unless, of course, your song has some actual horns in it, then go for it. Soul, Motown, blues, whatever. Kickball change, all you want. Um, and then I hope that worked really well. Welcome back to the video. Let's move on to the next piece. So, so far, we've played with the extensions and we've hopefully gotten really good at the leader communicating to the follower, like, hey, we've got extra time, and then we both do some stuff with it, okay? Um, so and we've talked about I might give that extra time because I want to do something, I might give that extra time because the move feels like it needs it. Another one is I might give that extra time because it feels like the follower wants it. And so we're gonna start to kind of go into that realm a little bit now. So now what we're gonna do, and we're gonna stick to just for simplicity's sake for right now, our styling we're gonna do is gonna happen on the sugar push and then keep the underarm basic. So we're gonna do eight count timing on the sugar push, except we're gonna do eight count whip timing as opposed to before we did like a six count with two bonus beats. So we're gonna go walk, walk, triple, then walk, walk, triple. Here we go, one, two, now keep this one basic. Then one, two, three, and four. Walk, walk, trip, full stretch. This one stays basic. Cool. Okay, so now we've actually changed the rhythm on five, six. So now we're doing something different rhythmically with those extra four counts that we have, or extra two counts, turning our six count into an eight. Now, again, we don't want it to just be lifeless, so we're not just gonna be like walk, walk as we do it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that walk to the side, so leaders to the right, followers to the left, and we're gonna go one, two, three, and four, side, five, bring it back, triple step. If you would like to try that with me, go. One, two, three, and four, side, bring it back, Trip bulls. I realize I didn't count you in five, six, seven, eight, because this isn't a normal class where I'm like, rotate. It's weird for me. But you can pause the video and try it on your own, or you should be able to see when I'm about to start and join in, since that's the topic of the whole class. Okay, so now when we're doing that walk where we go side, come back, a couple options you can do with that. So um, we're both kind of going with hips right now, so you can be like, hip, hip. I think you go that way. Go left. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Hip, <laughs> hip. Oh, we can go down to the knees. Low, low. Um, upper body, we can be like with the shoulders. Uh, uh. Maybe the head. Uh, let's do a drag when we come back. Drag. Doesn't have to be the same one. So I'm just going to tell you which one I'm going to do so you can deliberately make it different. Okay. I'm going to do the drag. Okay. And then you. Oh, wait, I forgot one. We can take the hips kind of around in a circle. All right, I'm gonna do hips around in a circle. Okay. You do a different one. Okay. So we have one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's pretty good. Well done, us. Go team. Okay, cool. So now we've got that one. Practice that sequence. Sugar push, do that styling, underarm, don't do it. Sugar push, do that styling, underarm, don't do it. Okay, now the thing about that is 
that we're both kind of doing the same thing, five, six, seven, and eight, but like that's not super realistic all the time in the wild. So let's say that she goes to do that and I don't. So I might go like this, one, two, three. I think I tried to say three and she goes at the same time and kind of turned into Shree and then I just turned that into a fart sound because it seemed like a better idea. Anyways, take two. One, two, three, and four. She goes, and then I'm gonna wait while she finishes up. So I did my anchor and then I was like, oh, cool. Seven and eight, give her two more beats. Or maybe I do it, she does a normal anchor. And then she's like, oh, I gotta wait. Boom, no, no, you're doing a normal anchor. It's my turn, this one's about me. One, two, three, you don't know what's coming. Boom, boom, and then she's gotta wait while I finish. So now it kind of plays into that extension strategy of while I'm doing this styling, she may end up with the extension kind of after the fact, or I may choose to do the extension because I saw her hips going in this big circle and I was like, cool, I don't want to pull you out of that because that's awesome. Okay, but followers, sometimes you do get pulled out of it. And later, sometimes we do our styling and on the other end, the followers just doing a super basic anchor and we're like, I don't think I want to add two more accounts to this. Like, let's just end it now. And so the skill for that is to be able to start the next pattern on the wrong foot, because we just went five, six. So if we start now, if we don't give ourselves seven and eight to do the anchor, I'm starting with the right foot, she's starting with the left foot. And that's a skill you want to have because it takes so much stress away in your styling if you can do this, because you're no longer worried leaders like, oh, what happens if I'm on the wrong foot? No big deal. Or followers, what if he pulls me before I got to the correct foot? No big deal. So in West Coast Swing, two wrongs kind of sort of make a right. So what I mean by that is if you are on the wrong foot and then you also do the wrong rhythm, it will get you back to the correct <laughs> foot. As opposed to some people get on the wrong foot and then they just keep doing the correct rhythm and that just keeps you on the wrong foot. So I'm about to start with my right foot. She's about to start with her left foot. That is wrong. But by the end of this, it'll just be cool. Normally, we'd start with a walk-walk, but that would only be one wrong. We need it to be two wrongs. So instead of doing a triple or walk-walk, we're gonna do a triple step. Wrong rhythm, wrong foot. Bop, bop, boom! Now it's fixed. Three and four, five and six. So instead of me doing one, two, starting with my left, I'm doing one and two, starting with my right. She's doing one and two, starting with her left instead of one, two, starting with her right. So leaders, the way you can make this work on just about any pattern, so we're using the underarm, is step wherever you would normally step on one, just do it with the wrong foot. One, then bring your feet together, and, and now it's fixed, two is just two. Some of you step up here on two of an underarm, some of you step here on two of an underarm, it doesn't matter. One, and problem solver, three and four, five and six. Followers, you've got a couple options, but what it comes down to is that you need to go forward the same distance you normally would. So a mistake followers sometimes make is they take three steps that are the same size each as their normal two steps, which means, stay with me on the math here, that you go 50% farther, which is too far. So a couple options. She's on the right foot. She can take three smaller steps. One and two, right? Or she could go forward, together, forward, forward, together, forward. Or she could have the left foot actually just kind of stay back a little bit and then come forward and two, right? And all three of those will work out fine. I'm forgetting one. Oh, some followers do a lock. They'll like lock it behind here, kind of stay sideways. That's another one you can do. Ba, ba, ba. Cool. And then as you're doing it, I like for there to be a little bit of hip action so you're not just like, good, good, good. So sometimes followers do kind of like side, side, circle, this little like tail swishy thing, that's another popular one. I call that the mermaid <laughs> as you're doing it. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, and four, side, five, six. Then we go one and two, three, and that was like a double mermaid, five and six. Cool, okay. But, leaders, one thing you have to understand, and I want you to all go to six with me and stop on this one. Here we go. One, two, three, and four, five, stop, six. Cool, so we're here on six, but the thing is, if I'm gonna pull her on one, 
I need to give her that here we go feeling now. And it's on the wrong foot for me, so that feels a little different. So you need to kind of practice that a little bit. The way I do it is I tend to take this foot back on kind of a diagonal, and I stick my butt out a little bit. So I'm kind of like six, and then she's not surprised when I pull her forward. As opposed to, if I go like this, one, two, three, and four, five, six, go! She definitely wasn't ready. I don't know if you guys saw it, but the arm went like this, and the eyes got really wide. And those wide eyes are a signal that you did not give her the correct signal, right? So we have one, two, three, and four, five, signal, one and two, three and four, five and six. So here's what I want you guys to try, and we'll do it one time through. We're going to do the sequence three times. On the first one, she's going to do the styling, but I'm just going to do a basic. And then on the second set, I will do the styling, and she will remember to do just the basic and not do it with me. And then on the third one, we will do it together. I'll remind you as we go. Five, six, here we go. One, two, her turn. But she can use that triple and still go. Three, and four, five, and six. This one's gonna be just my turn. Three, she does a normal anchor. Five, six, then I bring her forward. And then on the third one, we're all in this together. Let's all go for the big booty circle. Four, uh, six, go one and two, three and four, five. And this puts me on the wrong side to value, but whatever. All right, so now throw in a song, and now you have a ton of possibilities, or as one of my partners would have said, a ton of options, because Jen liked to call me option man. So basically what I want you to play with is sugar push and underarm with varying lengths of extensions or no extension. And then sometimes those are gonna be anchor and then we hang out. Sometimes we'll do the walk, walk here and then do the triple. Sometimes we'll do the walk, walk and then we'll actually go on the wrong foot. And the idea here is that by the end of this, you should be comfortable, both of you, starting the pattern on the wrong foot with a triple step. That's a really, really useful skill. And you should also be really comfortable and secure in the communication about when we stay and when we go and being able to use that extra time for something interesting when it happens, both leaders and followers, as opposed to just marching for no reason. I feel like I might have gone one minute over, but close enough. But now is probably a good time to remind you that this video was brought to you by the Silton Foundation. Check out the SiltonFoundation.org for um, financial dance assistance. I feel like, like scholarships and stuff, they give out $10,000 a year. Or also, if you're interested in donating, they are a nonprofit, and you could help support them, supporting dancers who support us. It's just this big support swing dance feedback loop, and we really love it. One more time, I'm Ben Morris. Check me out at benmorrisdance.com. And this is Lisa the Captain Picard. Thanks for hanging with us.